This is Dr. Carroll. Today's video is about algorithm analysis, in particular about the growth rates. Okay, so hopefully you've already watched the introductory video. We're going to build off of that. So growth rates are what algorithm analysis is all about. And so we're not so concerned necessarily how fast the program runs, but how efficient the algorithm is as the inputs increase. And when we say inputs increase, we mean really big input sizes. If you need a number, pick a million. I, that, that's along the lines of what we're thinking. And we'll see some of that to, in this video. Algorithm analysis reaches conclusions like algorithm A requires n squared divided by five time units to solve a problem with n inputs, or another algorithm takes five n time units to solve a problem with inputs. And, and then we're, we're going to, to look at that and analyze that. Let's see what that would look graphed. So here we have the red one is the first one with the pluses, and then the green one is the one with the, the, the stars. And here we can see, hmm, which one is better? Which one is better? Well, uh, from this graph, it's, it's a little hard to, to see. And, but we'll, as we'll see as this video progresses, that algorithm B is more efficient than algorithm A. Um, also, do note that the time units are not seconds or minutes or hours even. The, then if we define them as seconds, then we'd have to say on, on what machine and in what year and how much RAM, et cetera, et cetera. But we're going to abstract that away and focus more on the, the growth rates. So to do so, we need to know about big O notation. Algorithm analysis focuses on the order of an algorithm, the order of an algorithm. That is to say, the growth rate function. The order of an algorithm is order big O of that, that function, and hence the term big O here. Okay. So formally, if we have an algorithm that requires a, a function of time, then that order for that function is big O of that function. If we can come up with two constants, a k, and an n naught such that for the algorithm uh, requires no more time than the constant times um, that that function and we can pick for all n's above n naught now as we mentioned before algorithm analysis is only concerned with really big inputs so let's simplify that formal definition a little bit as we get to large inputs so Algorithm A requires f of n time, then it's order f of n, or big O f of n. If there's a constant k such that for large values of n, then the, the function is always less than or equal to a constant times that function. Okay, let's see an example. I think that'll help. Let's just pick out, uh, let's say, 7n squared minus 3n plus 10. I just kind of made that up, if you couldn't tell. Okay. So then, what is the order of this? And so, the formal definition above there says, if, if this um, function, the, the 7n squared minus 3n plus 10, is less than or equal to some k n squared for, for a k and large values of n, then it is order n squared. And so, let, let's see it. Let's play it out. Um, let's just pick uh, k is 9, and um, if looking only at n is greater than or equal to 3. Now, 3 is very small, but it, it serves the purpose here. So as we plug in the k and the, um, as we plug in the k value here, we resolve the exponentia exponentiation, and then we um, take the product, and then we do... Um, the subtract and add, then what we're left with is indeed 64 is less than or equal to 72. So um, 7n squared minus 3n plus 10 is order n squared. If you didn't get that, rewind and, and, and watch it again. Now, while there's several other combinations of k and n naught that would establish that order, we only need one that'll work. And so that, that works here. Okay, let's see this. Let's see what that would look like. Uh, 
oh, wrong example. All right, so here we have in red with the pluses our 7n squared minus 3n plus 10. And here we have the kn squared, where k is 8. I guess we chose 9 in the example. Uh, oh, sorry, k was 9 in the example, but it'll still work out. As we can see, it is bounded by it. Um, this is always less than or equal to this, and, and you can get a sense that as we get very large values that that's going to continue the case. So then that says that this red algorithm here is the order of n squared here in blue with the stars. Now the order of means that it's going to behave approximately the same. It's going to grow about the same rate. Do these look like they're growing the same rate? It's kind of hard to tell here, but if we um, put it on a log log scale, you can see that this one, except for, for small values of n here, this one is growing about the same rate as n squared. And that's what we're concerned about. What is the order of it? Not necessarily is it exactly equal to it, but is it growing along the same order of it? Okay. So up until now, we've ignored some details um, in, in the, the video and, and the other ones. And so let's be more specific about what we can ignore and why. More formally, what are the properties of growth rate functions? First of all, we can ignore lower order terms. For example, given what we have above, we could write order of 7n squared minus 3n plus 10. Well, if we can ignore the lower order terms, the lower order terms are going to be um, the n and the constant here. So that's we could equivalently write that as it's the order of 7n squared. And, and because it's going to grow, they're going to grow about the same. For large values of n, this does not contribute substantially to the overall execution or the overall value of, of the function. So we can ignore lower order terms. We can also ignore the multiplicative constant for the highest order term. And we're only left with highest order terms here because we've ignored all the rest. So if we boil it down to 7n squared then, that means it's order n squared. Okay? And that's how we can, uh, that's part of why we can make some assumptions and uh, these things don't matter. We don't count these. We're, we're just going with the heart of it. What, what is the biggest contributor? When, when n gets really big, what happens? There's two more uh, properties. One, if we have the big O of one function plus the big O of another, that is going to equal taking the functions, adding them together, and then taking the big O of that. And then you would apply properties one and two, which is really going to boil down to the, the max uh, big O of f of n or and g of n. So if we had n squared was f of n and g of n is n, well, um, we're going to add those together and then we're going to apply number one, the ignore lower terms, or we're just going to be left with n squared. Similarly, if we have the product of two uh, big O's, uh, two functions, then we're going to take the product of the two functions and then we could take the big O of that. We've already seen this in, in the introductory video when we had a nested for loop. The nested for loop um, called an, the, the outer for loop called the inner for loop that many times. And so that's equivalent to the property number four there with the, the nested for loop. So now that we can determine the big O of individual algorithms, let's, dis, let's talk about typical growth rates. So here's uh, a list of common growth rates, their names, and we're going to talk about some examples. Here we have a constant time. This is any code that doesn't depend on the input. For example, a, a print statement, uh, an, an if statement, it, it doesn't depend on the input. It's just constant time. Then we could have logarithmic um, uh, time, log n. And this is for your divide and um, divide the problem into smaller units and, and then operate on those units. For example, binary search would fit that, um, that class. So then we have um, 
big O of N, that, that's linear. An example would be a linkless traversal or a linear search. Those are going to depend strictly on the number of inputs. We have N log N. It doesn't have a name, um, but it divides the problem size into smaller units and then solves each of those separately. Um, in a different video, we'll cover merge sort, which is a, a wonderful example of this, of a, a efficient sorting algorithm. The next one is n squared or quadratic. And so you could, uh, we've seen this with two nested for loops. You could think a two dimensional array. Uh, n cubed is cubic. Uh, you could, for example, a common way you're, a uh, common scenario you're going to see this is, is if you're tracking x, y, and z positions or three nested loops to, to do that and to solve that. We have two to the n. This is called exponential. This is uh, pronounced bad. Um, if you have this, hope, hope for a better algorithm. So the famous traveling sales problem, traveling salesman problem, you, using dynamic programming will um, be on the order of two to the end or exponential. This last one uh, looks like it's factorial, but it's pronounced very bad. So if you're going to solve the traveling salesman problem with a brute force, just going to try all possibilities, this is how long it's going to take. Um, this is very bad and um, only works for very small n, and so you hope you don't have it. Okay? So there's an order to these orders, and the ordering is very important. The, the ordering is given with a constant time is less than log of n, logarithmic, which is less than linear, which is less than n log n, which is less than quadratic, which is less than cubic, which is less than exponential, which is less than factorial, and there's more, but um, after that, it just gets really bad, and we usually, uh, hopefully, don't run into those. Let's, let's see what this looks like. So here we have all of these um, algorithms we just explained he, here in red with the pluses is uh, constant. Then we have log, log, logarithmic here. And then we have linear here. And we have n log n here. And then we have, let's see what's next, quadratic, cubic, exponential, and factorial. So this doesn't seem to flow with the um, relationship defined below here. Let, let's zoom out a little bit and see if we can get a better sense. Okay, this is starting to differentiate them a little bit better, but there's still this confusion for small n even here. What is going on in this region? If we plot it on a log log plot, and this is only 10,000, so this may or may not be a uh, large um, and depending on your problem. Here we have constant, and then we have uh, logarithmic, and then we have linear, and then we have n log n, and we have quadratic, and cubic, exponential, and factorial. Notice factorial doesn't even get to 9 uh, before it hits uh, 10,000. And logarithmic isn't, uh, sorry, exponential is not far behind it, and cubic Oh man, is on a, a terrible growth um, rate there in terms of how long it's going to take. So this, when we zoom out this far, this shows them in the correct order of how long they're going to take. As you can see, you can imagine plotting this out with the upper bound here being much higher. There's a huge difference in the orders. And so it makes a big difference on how to... Uh, on, on which algorithm is going to be used. Okay, now let's let's take a moment and talk about worst case versus average case analysis. Depending on the input, worst case and average case can be very different. For example, what if we're looking for something in a link list? And for now, we'll just assume that the item is in the list. What's the worst case? Worst case would be the item is in the very last position, and we have to look through everything to, to get there. The average case, 
if an item's in the list, is we're going to have to, on average, look through half the list. Sometimes one, sometimes all of them, but on average, it's going to be half the list. There's also actually a best case. What would be the best case for looking for an item in, in a list? It would be that the item is in the first position. And the first one we check, woohoo, we found it. Okay? And so that's an illustration of worst case, average case, and, and best case. Um, for algorithmic analysis, if the case is if the case isn't stated, it's assumed that it's worst case, which provides an upper bound. This is particularly true with with a big O notation. On a final note, let's talk about big theta. So we've been talking about big O, big O, big O, and and what that does is that provides an upper bound. And so if you had a a function is the order or big O of f of n. If you can come up with a constant, and for large values, it's always below that. Well, big theta is, it's the growth rate. It's not an upper bound, it, it is the growth rate. And so, if we have a function, it's bounded by big theta of another function. If we can come up with two constants, such that uh, g of n is always between um, h of n times the lower constant and h of n times the larger constant. And so it hones us in right on what is the growth rate. So while big theta is more precise, big O is often what we're going to use even when we could use big theta. That's it for this video.